giving it just a couple of seconds as people come into the room. Okay. Hello, and welcome to Financial Focus with Delta Jones Walker of Atlet Financial. My name is Chelsea Whittington, and this is the very first episode of Financial Focus, a new decade, a new year, and it's time for all of us to get our financial lives, and Delta Jones Walker is just the person to help us do that. Welcome, Delta. Welcome, Chelsea. Welcome. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. And um, I am thankful that we have a new line item on our list of things to do and mm -hmm. getting the financial news and information out to our clients. But before we start, I want to put my disclosure out there, which is securities and advisory services offered through Woodbury Financial Services, Inc. Members of FINRA and CIFIC Insurance Services offered through Atlet Financial Group, 717B Main Street, Sherville, Indiana, 46375, which is not affiliated with Woodbury Financial. So we've got right. it. we've gotten our disclosure. We have always have We're to get in our compliance. We're in compliance, yes. And so <clears throat> I just want to give a little history to how we arrived to this program today. Okay. So for the past year or so, no, I want to say it's been almost two, it's been two years. You have been pinning a column for the Chicago Crusader. The three. Crusader. Three years. This is our third year. Wow. <laughs> How that time flies when mm -hmm. you're having fun. And so each month you have a different financial topic and you talk about different tips and you give readers tips on how they can get better financially prepared for various things, whether it's buying a house, saving, etc. And so for 2020, as we seek to be even better financially, mm -hmm. we decided to extend that column into a Facebook Live conversation. So your first column just came out in the Crusader last Friday, and it's titled, I have a copy here, Kick Off the Decade with an Aggressive Savings Strategy. Mm -hmm. And as you know, we all get our information differently. We so do. I want to applaud you for stepping out to expand that audience because a lot of people read your articles online and they recognize you in the grocery store as sure like the do. money lady, the investor lady. They're like, hey, I know you. Yes. Like, okay, I know you too. <laughs> or we want to know you. <laughs> and so now with this new avenue, this is an opportunity for you to impact even more of your audience about getting financially yes, fit. about getting yourself financially in tune. And, um, you know, I talk about this all the time. And I want everyone to know in the listening audience, I want to catch you right where you are to take you where you're going. Mm -hmm. And if you in turn start the process and something happens and you fall by the wayside, we can start back up again. Yeah. So I don't want you to think that if you start and something happens, you just wait till next year. No, no. you know, situations occur, things happen. But one thing that I want to make sure that we pay real close attention to, and that is treat yourself like a bill. Mm. You pay everyone else, you need to pay yourself. And if you are not paying yourself or something happens and you need to take that money that you would normally pay yourself with and you need to put it somewhere else. When you do pay yourself that month, you mm -hmm. need to pay yourself like you're paying a bill with a late charge. So let me, before we go into each one of the tips about aggressive saving for 2020, talk to me a little bit about your career and what you've seen as far as why, why don't we save? Because everybody always says, I don't make enough to save. Is that a myth? That is a myth. A lot of people say that, but just like you work mm -hmm. and it doesn't take a lot, you can save $25. Start small and build yourself up. Mm -hmm. That's just like I have people now that are putting the max into their retirement account but they weren't putting anything in their retirement account initially. Playing catch up? Playing catch up, and so now they started with putting in 2% mm -hmm. or 3%. Mm -hmm. Whatever the company was matching, that's what they started with. Mm -hmm. And then they said, Delta, this is like, I don't even miss it. Right. Excuse me, I said, I know that. Mm -hmm. So every quarter, 
increase it by 1% until you say it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. Okay. Ouch. It hurts. And people would say, you know, Delta, I've increased it and I've not even noticed the difference in my take home pay mm -hmm. because it's coming off the top before taxes. Yeah. Well, so now you put yourself as a line item. I'm not trying to share who should do what in regards to their religious standpoint. But for but you. For me, it is paying the tithe, putting money in my retirement account, mm -hmm. and then paying myself. Mm -hmm. After I pay myself, then I pay everybody else. Okay. But with that mindset, you are doing two things. You are building your savings profile mm -hmm. on a non-qualified as well as on a qualified basis. Okay. And you are also taking care of your obligations that you have, your debt that you have, mm -hmm. and you're building your credit worthiness. So three things have happened there. Okay. And I just say at all times, because when you are talking, when I have the opportunity to talk with millennials, millennials say things like, I don't want to talk about retirement. Um, <laughs> Insurance, money. I don't want to talk stuff. about any of that. All I want to be is financially independent, and I want to do that at the age of 40. Okay, what? how do I do that, Delta? <laughs> well, first of all, I need to be working at a job that's making me X, Delta, in order for me to feel comfortable in the lifestyle that I have envisioned for myself. Okay. So when they tell me their dreams that they have, mm -hmm. they're not far-fetched, but you have to have a system in place. And just because you are saving money, you need to also have some passive income streams also in place, okay? Buy yourself a, another dwelling if you already have one. That's an income generating dwelling. Okay. When that is doing very well for you, then you want to buy another one. So you want to build your passive income and you want to always come to the table, I would say you need to have accountability partners. So just in case something did not go well, you can share that and they can say, okay, well, maybe you should have done it this way or have you thought about it opposed to keeping that all within yourself and beating yourself up. No, you need to share that because we do have um, situations that occur where things don't work out just like you want to because, you know, it's not like we live in a picture perfect world. That's correct. And for those of you who are just tuning in, I'm having a noonday conversation. Noonday with Delta Jones Walker of Adlet Financial located here in Cherryville, Indiana. I have a question for you. We're talking about aggressive savings um, that any and everybody can save, mm -hmm. no matter where you are, if it's $5 a week or if it's 500 a week, but it needs to happen. So when you are saving, one of the questions I had is around um, how people save. Is it just a savings account or do you create separate accounts or what have you seen and what are some of the different trends when it comes to saving and, and how we get our best bang for our buck when we're putting our money away? Chelsea, that really, the best answer I can give to that is no two people are alike. Okay. I have some people that don't save. Oh no. Most people come in here, they don't save. Okay. okay? Um, and then I have my 10 percenters, they come in here and they've saved all their life, okay? But I have 90% that come in the door and they not save. And when I say not save, they have some money, but it's like in a put in, take out account, okay? So now what we need to do is we need to get some structure. Okay. So you have a money account. You have your, your check goes into your checking account, mm -hmm. okay? So when the check goes into the checking account, you want to divvy that fund up, whereas the money for the bill money goes into the bill money right away. Okay. The money that you have for spending, whether that be for groceries, um, money to pay for your gas, money to pay for your, um, you know, your gym okay. membership. Yeah. You have that in another account. Okay. okay? So after you pay your bills and if it has a $50 balance, you're like, you're feeling good because you know your bills have been paid, okay? Right. Accountability. Okay. Your spending account, you, that account gets down to $5.55. You're a little disappointed because it's seven days left before pay, paycheck again. But 
<laughs> we have some hand raises in the, in the building. <laughs> we have to be very mindful. That's mm-hmm. the point that I want to um, stress on how we're spending our money. Mm-hmm. So I always tell people, as you're going into this new journey, you might want to note how you're spending money and review yes. that at the end of every week. Yes. And by reviewing that at the end of every week, that will shave off a few things that you might say, I really don't need to spend money at Starbucks. Nothing's yes. wrong with Starbucks. Yeah. But I don't need to do that every day of the week. Mm-hmm. Um, my gosh, I've gone in there and I spent at seven dollars. Five days, that's $35. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could have put $20 in my savings account. Yeah. $20 and you're putting in your $20 a week in your savings account. As a result, you'll see that in a run of a month, you've saved $80. And you're just like, wow, how did that happen? Mm-hmm. But you want to get yourself in some kind of consistency. You say in your article here, as you uh, take a couple of weeks to write down every expense, and you said, you'll either be surprised Mm -hmm. or embarrassed by the amount of dollars we spend on unnecessary expenses. That's correct. That is so correct. Ouch. Right. That's that's one of those telling things, and I will tell those who are watching, if you come in and sit down with Delta as a a financial advisor, just prepare to be financially undressed and Candid, right? Yes. Something about talking about money makes us antsy and nervous. And I want you to be very calm. Yeah. Trust me, what goes on in here stays in here. This conversation is strictly confidential. Um, there's no, I don't want you to feel like you will be judged because, mm-hmm. you know, everyone has a situation. Right. At the end of the day, we want to make sure that you are financially aware and that you are in a place eventually that you feel financially comfortable. That's the end objective. Okay. So one of the tips in your article, you tell us to, once we have come to the conclusion that I can save because a lot of my expenses are frivolous and unnecessary and extra, and that we don't have to have that extra two pumps in the latte every day that Mm -hmm. we can dial it back a little bit and save a little bit, that we select the amount that we plan to save each month and the day we deposit it into a separate account and we stick to this commitment uh, while just like we're paying our other bills. How do we get to that point of that discipline, Delta? I mean, we say we're gonna do it. We started off in January and say, I put that $50 in. Do you recommend putting alerts on there? You talked a little bit about on your phone. You also talked about accountability partners. Talk about some of those tactics. Well. First and foremost, let's just start on, let's say on January 5th, you got paid, Mm -hmm. okay? And so your resolution was, I'm gonna save $25 every pay cycle, okay? So when the paycheck comes, first and foremost, you wanna open up another account, okay? And you wanna open it up that has, Mm -hmm. excuse me, no debit card as well as no checking. Oh, that's key. Okay, no You can't debit get card. back to it. You cannot get back to it. It's okay. a process. You got to get up and you have to go to that location. To get that money To out. get that money. So that must mean you really, really need it if you yes. have to get up you and go get it. You got to get up and go get it. Okay. okay, got it. Okay, so you set up online so that you could have the money directly transferred into that particular account. Okay, okay. so you do that. And... It really becomes out of sight, out of mind, because at the beginning of the month or at the fifth of the month when you're paying your bills, and I just use that number arbitrarily, Mm -hmm. you are sitting there paying your bills and you say, okay, $25, you'll be like, okay, let me move that $25 over to my savings account and you keep it moving. Mm -hmm. And the second pay period, you do the same thing because it's at the beginning and you're like, $25, that's no money. Well, at the end of the quarter, you get your statement And you're like, where did $300 come from? Well, you have been saving and it got so good to you, you might have gotten a bonus check or some other money because of the fact that you're in that rhythm, Mm -hmm. you just automatically send $25 over there. So now your account goes from $0 to $300 and you didn't even miss it, out of sight, out of mind. Like so that. that's basically how it starts. Okay. I have um, a few clients that they didn't like that method. And, um, and that was fine. I said, tell me, pick, pick something and let me know what works for you. Mm-hmm. 
it came back to me that Delta, I save money like a grandparent does. I put it in an envelope. <laughs> Is that safe? I said, okay, are you going to take the money to the bank? Right. Yes, I am. I'm going to take the money to the bank, but it's just helping me feel like I am not broke okay. because of the fact I'm spending my money and I'm doing something that I didn't share with you in our meeting. Mm -hmm. I want to get out of debt. So I'm doing a snowball effect. And so my smallest bill, I'm putting all the money that I possibly can on that. To get it out. So I have two things going on at the same time. Okay. I built up some cash that I keep because, you know, I'm broke for the most part because I'm paying, I'm paying down everything. debt. I'm okay. paying down debt. But I have my credit score has increased not by a lot, but by maybe seven or eight points because I have exhausted a piece of debt and my utilization has gone down because my utilization was at 99%. So mm -hmm. now I'm at 92. Okay. So it just really depends. And that's why I'd say that when you come into Atlet Financial, mm -hmm. your first appointment is a complimentary consultation. Complimentary, everybody. It costs nothing to sit down and get started. Nothing. 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 And I catch you right where you are to take you to the financial independence that you are striving to achieve. Okay, that's wonderful. So this last tip on here, and if you're looking for this article, it's already online. You can go to Crusader, ChicagoCrusader.com and just type in Delta Jones Walker. And it's there, all of her articles are there. It's like all of them. 30 or 40 articles there. You're quite the, the writer. Mm -hmm. um, this one says, if you want to take this aggressive saving things to the next level, mm -hmm. assess a fine to pay yourself if you miss a savings deadline. So if I originally said I was going to do $25 on the 5th mm -hmm. and I didn't do it until, say, January 30th, I got to put $30 in or something like that. Is that what you're saying, basically? Um, I'm fining myself because I didn't stick to what I said I was going to do. Or you could look at it just like a credit card statement. Mm -hmm. If you are late one time but the credit card bill they assess you 20 bucks mm -hmm. if you are late two times they assess you 29 bucks uh -oh. and if you are late over three times they assess you 39 dollars so you could put that measure into place for yourself mm -hmm. but whatever you're doing you need to make it steep enough so that it hurts you and, or and you could feel the crunch. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, you will make sure that you're always on point in regards to paying yourself like you pay your creditor. All right. Well, this has been such a great conversation about aggressive saving. If you could tell our viewers one more time where you're located. Okay. And um, how to find and follow you and what number to call to set up that complimentary consultation because 2020, we are getting ourselves financially focused. Okay, um, listening audience, again, my contact number is 219-513-3710. The location of Atlet Financial is 717B as in boy, Main Street, and that is in Cherville, Indiana, 46375. You can reach out to our web address, which is www.atlantfinancial.com. And uh, you can give us a call at 219-513-3710 to set up your complimentary consultation because this year is the year of impact. And we are going to impact our savings to build our financial network. I'm with that. I'm with that. And I want to thank each and every one of you for tuning in. Thank you. Watch for Delta's next column in the Chicago Crusader the first Friday in February. And then we'll be back on, is it Friday the 13th? I yeah. think it is. We'll That's going to be a great day. That's, it is. Because by that time, they will have started saving. Yes. And we can take a few questions. We can. And you'll find out what that next financial focus topic will be. In the meantime, follow Delta on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and we will see you in February. All right. Bye. Bye-bye.